So far I've been doing circular pours or what some people call ring pours or tree pours. Today I'm going to be looking at linear pours where instead of moving the cup in a circle, I move it straight back and forth. We'll see what that looks like. But before we get to that, I wanted to pass on a couple more things I've learned in be since the last video. And that is, is I've been mixing my colors wrong. I found that the below yellow colors, greens and the blues, are chromatic opposites of the upper colors, the oranges and the reds. When you mix green and red, you get, well, mud. <laughs> and even though blue with a little bit of red is supposed to make an attractive purple, it, more often than not it comes out as, well, purplish mud. So from now on, I'm going to be limiting my color palette to either below the yellow, the blues and greens, or above the yellow the oranges and reds, and hopefully avoid some of those muddy colors that aren't very attractive. Another thing I learned was from one of my commenters who said that I should try using a little bit less paint in the very bottom of the cup. And the reason is that's the last paint to come out. That's what goes into the center of the picture. And if I'm using a lot of that or as much as the other colors, it's going to spread out and take over the whole canvas that what I want to do is use more ink in the first part of the pour and less towards the center so that things get a little bit more balanced. So we're gonna try that today and see how it works. Once again, the board has been prepped with just a thin brushed on layer of the white. Here we go. Okay, I think the mistake I made is I was moving back and forth in too large a line. But let's tilt her out and see what it ends up looking like. All right, well, what I can see is that using more of the first color that goes on, that is at the top of the cup, and less of the bottom color, which is the last that goes in onto the canvas, actually worked out pretty good because I haven't lost all of my initial color. We've got some hints of purple, most of it is blue, and because I had yellow in there, it's as expected, we've gotten some green, but still not great, but showing promise. I'm going to try another canvas, only this time with smaller back and forth strokes. Let's see what that looks like. Let's try it again. Oh, let's tilt it out. Okay, interesting. Seems like I've lost almost all of the purple, but I still have good blue some nice stripes, shows promise. Next, we're going to try a same pour, but with the canvas tilted up so that the um, paint flows down it. Okay, this is an eight by 10 inch canvas, and I have it elevated at one end by three inches. Let's try a different color scheme. Okay, let's stop it there, and let's stop the flow, and let's see what happens when we tilt it off to the sides. All right, that's a complete mess. <laughs> uh, the black is showing through the white, so the white doesn't look white. 
the black showing through the red, so the red is looking kind of a gray red. And the only place it looks interesting is down here. So this is an idea that's interesting, but I think we need to take another shot at it. Mainly reduce the angle of the tilt so that the paint doesn't all flow off the end. This time, I primed with white and then put a frame of thick black around it so that I don't have to tilt the canvas as much and lose as much detail out of the center. Also, I've reduced the tilt at this end to just one inch. Here we go. This looks like something you'd see at Halloween. And here comes the white. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, now minimal tilting. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the block. That lay flat, maybe widen it just a little. I'll come back. All right. I'm making a mess out of the edge. But that shows some promise. I like this tilt technique. The key seems to be to not have it tilt too much. I'd almost not like to knock this down to about three quarters of an inch instead of an inch to slow things down even more. But I see some potential here. It's still not right. I need to do the pouring more up here so I don't have this sort of bottleneck showing up here just so we get a nice shape up here. Uh, but with a little work, I can see some pot potential with this. I'd like to close this set of experiments uh, with something I've learned. Uh, this is probably my 15th pour, and I'm still not very good at it. So uh, what I'm learning is that although on YouTube videos, acrylic pouring looks beautiful and you get some great results out of it, uh, the people doing that have a lot of experience, maybe even are professionals, and they know what they're doing and they've had a lot of practice. If, like me, you're brand new to this, don't expect to get good results, unless you're lucky, uh, right out of the bottle, so to speak. But we are making progress, and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the next time, next experiment. So I hope you'll come back and see what we have.